So this is a grand room where the majority of my collection resides. I say the majority because uh, I tried to contain it all in one room and that proved to be uh, unsuccessful. So it now has crept all over the house. But this room was designed for my collection and it's quite like the officer's club and the Victoria's, Queen Victoria's Day or whatever. I like it the way it is. But anyway, let's walk through it and that will be the second, uh, the second exposure that you have to this overall collection. So once again, my name's Daniel Boris. This is my collection and it also um, houses the Donald Featherstone collection, uh, which I bought from him over a period of years. And I'll go into that in much more detail as we go also. We'll start over here and walk around the room. Never done a, a walking video before, so... Let's hope it's not too much of a disaster. We'll just focus on the figures and ignore the books and manuscripts and uh, the, the, the pictures on the wall for now. These are box sets of William Britton's. The top set, Spahis, very rare, produced in one year only. Uh, maybe one of the most valuable sets in my collection. Uh, but there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of box sets of William Britton's here. Now, there's the Donald Featherstone collection, uh, with also some war game figures of my own, uh, but mainly this is Donald's. I hope I can get a good focus for you. Um, these are British Napoleonics, and I'll do them in detail uh, another day, frame by frame. Uh, these are French Napoleonics that are facing them. You can see that I like to uh, present uh, my figures as well as I can. So they, they tend to be in frames of one sort or another. That's exactly what these are, large picture frames with imitation grass for the, the base. This is another British Napoleonics. Again, facing uh, our French Napoleonics. So we have set all of these up as the co combatants facing each other. So here we have the French. And next there's Austrians and Russians. And they are also facing the French. This time uh, I was going to say it's the old guard, but it's not. The last one was the old guard. So another uh, mastery of the French. There's three frames to to include the uh, the French Napoleonic collection. Next, we move to the English Civil War, and these are all Donald's figures, Donald Featherstone's figures. Uh, well, they were, um, and what you're seeing in this frame is the round heads, the parliamentarians. And next to that we have the cavaliers, the royalists. And you can see there's a lot of Prince Rupert's cavalry right in the middle there. And the Scots in both flanks at the rear, the reserve, right? Normally they would push the Scots right up front and let us get slaughtered first. But there we have, in my uh, view of things, the Scots in reserve. Now, this next one isn't Donald's at all. This next one's mine. This was my War Games collection that I used when, uh, 22 years ago actually, Greeks and uh, Macedonians. And I War Gamed with them for years. Loved the figures, loved War Gaming. Uh, and this next one is Donald's again, Donald Featherstone's. And it is... It is uh, a Carthaginian army, uh, which is what Donald used for his ancients. 
But there's elements of it that, that are not really Carthaginian. There's Mongols in there and one thing and another. But it's basically, uh, it's basically Carthaginian. And then the last frame here is actually Tony Bath's figures. Tony Bath was a, he's now passed away, as is Donald Featherstone, I'm afraid. Tony Bath, uh, in the old days for the Society of Ancients, uh, had what he called a series of campaigns called the Hyboria campaigns. And he used flat figures and painted them himself. And I bought these from Tony Bath many years ago. So next we have, ignore the pictures if you can, for now, we'll get back to all of that, but not in this visit. Next we have a, a cabinet, which is full of 54 millimeter figures. Now, sadly you get me in the background because it's mirrored, uh, but you're seeing some Blenheim, Marlborough, there's a Britain's uh, Holocaust uh, naval uh, artillery team, Britain's uh, Camel Corps, Tradition Camel Corps. And then as we go through, you see a whole bunch of Marlborough and other figures from the Delhi Durbar. Here is a coronation coach from 1953 uh, with uh, all the beef eaters and outriders and a mounted band of the lifeguard in front of that. And then we have the Britain's, again, holocaust changing of the colour set. Uh, all of these things, of course, were produced in the region of the uh, 1950s. So the, the last time Britain's produced any lead holocaust was 1962, uh, with one exception where they brought them back for a short time. The next frame down uh, is a, an odd bunch. They're mainly rose miniatures, and I bought them uh, as being part of... Uh, part of uh, the, the Cyrus Seton's grandson collection. Cyrus Seton started the, uh, built the, the, the railroads across Canada and his grandson was a collector. I bought the figures based on that. Below, again, is a whole bunch of medievals, uh, largely but not entirely tradition miniatures. We'll be finished this soon. It seems to be taking a lot longer than I had hoped to take your time with. Second cabinet, down here that is, because of God there's a lot of cabinets. Um, the top shelf is uh, mass band.